Good afternoon. This is Andrew Sheets with The Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler is a blog about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us who believe on Him and applying this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. We are saved if we believe Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. The title of this study is, What Does the King James Bible Say About Our Glorified Bodies When We Are With Jesus? This is after, of course, we're talking about in the resurrection when we're raptured. And for those who are raptured after death, for those who are caught up, harpazoed and taken up, caught up, this also would include the other that are brought in part of the first resurrection during the tribulation, the Jewish remnant that comes in, the tribulation saints and the Old Testament saints that were brought back with Christ after his resurrection. Dear Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that eyes could be opened. I pray this work be submitted for your glory even so. Come, Lord Jesus, amen, Maranatha. John chapter 20, verse 26, it is written, and after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. John 20 26 shows us that Jesus, after this is eight days, this is the eighth day, his disciples already were all shut up. They were terrified because now Jesus has been crucified. This is after his resurrection. This is after he had already gone to heaven, which I'm going to talk about in verse 17 of John chapter 7 of John chapter 20. This is Jesus Christ in his body that was walking, talking, eating, drinking. It's his physical body, but his body now does not have blood because he's in his glorified body that moves and literally can go through walls. Yeah, oh yeah, this is what's being said. The doors were shut and he stood there in the midst of them. This does not go into him being invited and he walked in the door, etc. And they're terrified. This is why Jesus says, peace be unto you. Now, if we go back to verse 17 of John chapter 20, we see it is written here, John 20, verse 17, and Jesus said unto her, this is Mary Magdalene, touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. What's happened here? This is when Mary honestly thought that Jesus was the gardener. Now this tells us clearly, now this is after Jesus has what? He has risen again from the dead the third day. The women went to the tomb. We can read it together in John chapter 20. Interesting, the women were there, not afraid. The men were all hiding, terrified. Mary thought he was the gardener. Do you know where they put my master? He's like, hey, it's me. But actually go to John chapter 20 now, if you would, please. Uh, open your King James Bible and read uh, John. Go to John chapter 20. And if you will pick up there with me, if we look at...
We see here in John chapter 20, we open up with this is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was the first day of the week, and this is a Sunday. Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved. And this is John, of course, and said to them, hey, they've taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not whither they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth with the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran to both together. The other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher, stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, lying, excuse me, went, uh, yeah, went he not in. And then come a Simon Peter following him and went to the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lieth with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Now, there is a study on that. I have it back in an old blog that that's a study in itself in verse 7. But let's continue. Then went in also that other disciple, and came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. They didn't, re what this is saying is they didn't realize, he'd already told them several times, but they hadn't put it together yet. Then the disciple went away into their own home. But Mary stood without of the sepulcher, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and see two angels in white sitting, one at the head, one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they Say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? And she said to them, because they've taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and she saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him, hence tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and saith unto them, I ascend unto my father, and your father, and to my God and your God. So we know that later Mary Magdalene, she came, she told the disciples that she'd seen the Lord and they'd spoken these things unto her. And at the same day, that evening, now this was when they were all locked in, terrified, uh, fearing the Jews, that Jesus stood in the midst of them, peace be unto you. Now Jesus says again, peace be unto you, as my father has sent me, even so I send you. And then this is when uh, Jesus later appears to Thomas, and I'll talk about that later here in verse 20. And in uh, verse 27, then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, whither Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. What had happened here? Thomas was with them, and it was eight days the disciples were, and Thomas was with them, and guess what? They were still. Thomas could not believe it. What had happened here? Thomas is like, I need proof. Read verse 24, but Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, hey, we've seen the Lord. But he saith unto them, except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. So Jesus appeared again, and he said to Thomas, hey, watch me, this is me. And Thomas was like, 
Oh, my Lord and my God, in verse 28. And Jesus then says to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Now we know that Jesus spent another 40 days on earth walking around, seen, witnessed by, we're told, 500 that know that he was in a physical body. Now, his physical body, after his resurrection, he, when it says he ascended to his father, and I'm going to talk about this, the Godhead versus Trinity. No, there's not another God Another person, the old man sitting up there, Jesus went back up there and says, hey, daddy, I'm home. Uh, I'm going to go back down to earth. Now, what had happened? God is spirit. No man hath seen. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. It's all in my studies. Read Colossians chapter 1, 15 and 16. Read Colossians chapter 2, 8 and 9. Read Genesis chapter 1, 26, 27, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 and 5, 2, Genesis chapter 5, 2, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, it's in my studies. There are not three gods, there are not three bodies, there's not three persons, there's only one person, that is Jesus Christ. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, that means the only person. And what the Father, Jesus is referring to, the Spirit, his very Spirit, which is what? Eternally everywhere. It's omnipresent, but he's going to the third heaven. What? To this blood, blood sprinkled mercy seat to accomplish the mission. And once that's done in the Spirit, he makes that final thorough, 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 thorough completion of the contract. What contract? that he had to pay for the fall of man. He paid the price. He was the lamb, the slain lamb of God that takes on the sins of the world, right? Who paid the price that our sins were laid on him? He took on the iniquity of us all, right? So now Jesus is back. Now he must come back as what? A witness so they don't say, yeah, no, he died. That was a big fake. There was some spirit. They say he saw his spirit. No, this is his body, his body, his body, his body, his body. Now, read Philippians chapter 3, 21. What does this have to do with it? Well, we know that Philippians 3, 21 reads, who shall change our vile body, oh, praise God, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So we're promised that our frail, weak, carnal bag of flesh, thank God, with all of our frailties, our failures, we're of the first Adam, Yes, yes, but yet we also have the spirit, what, within us, we're regenerated, we're born again, we are new creatures in Christ. In this body, we have this hidden, what, treasure, this priceless treasure in this earthen body, as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, and we will be with him and be like him. This is what the resurrection will look like. Now, in the studies, I will show you the first fruits. Jesus Christ was the first fruits. And what we are the first resurrection and take part of this first resurrection and clearly in Revelation chapter 20, verse six, as I've already said, it's all in the studies. So we have to know that what Jesus says is he that hath seen me hath seen the Father in John chapter 14, nine, now, this is another, let me talk about John 14, 9. This is another instance, but in this case, it was Philip. Philip was like, you talk about the father all the time, you know. Uh, when we, who's the father? When can we see the father? And Jesus was like, Philip, I've been with you for so long, and you ask me to see the father? There's not another person. There's not another God. When you see me, you see the father. Yes, 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 
Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's only one person. He is God Almighty, the Ancient of Days. The Father's the Spirit within him. Listen, if this is so hard for you Trinitarians to conceive this, if you cannot, if the Spirit of Christ is not in you in accordance with Romans chapter 8, 9, and the Spirit of truth, John chapter 16, verse 13, Verse 13 does not abide in you, who is Jesus Christ. If you do not know this, it's because the truth is not in you. It's clear as Jesus tells the Pharisees in John chapter 8, 42 through 47, as it is written in Isaiah, without the truth being in you, the light being in you, you do not, cannot see and know the truth. We are going to be like him. Now, to understand this, as we see in 2 Peter 3.16, it also is in his epistle speaking in them of these things, in which some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. The Laodicean church, these reprobates that actually believe that the church is not the bride and the body. You can be both. A wife is both the one and the body of her husband, and she is yet a separate person. We will be changed in an instant. We have to know and learn these things, and the church, little flock of Peter, does come to the church They're all, we're all one in Israel. There's not a separate little flock running around, a separate gospel running around with the the Peter was a Jew and stayed a Jew. No, he came to the mystery and understanding what Paul wrote, meaning all these promises of what Israel is, we will reign with him. We have to study, we have to show ourselves approved unto God what rightly dividing the word of truth means, opening and examining every word. Now, The King James Bible provides several passages that describe the glorified bodies of these resurrected, of those resurrected at the rapture. Now, here's a few. Of course, we know 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17. We know that this passage describes the rapture where the dead in Christ will rise first and then those that are alive will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This implies a transformation into our glorified bodies. We have in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 42 through 44, that the resurrection of the dead, it's sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It's sown in dishonor. It's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness, yet it's raised in power. It is sown in the natural body. It's raised in the spiritual body. There is a natural body, and then there is a spiritual body. This passage highlights the transformation from the natural to a glorified spiritual body. I read to you Philippians 3.21, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he was able to subdue all things unto himself. It's obvious this verse speaks of the transformation of our current bodies to be like Christ's glorious body. Now these verses collectively describe the transformation of believers' bodies into glorified, incorruptible. That means they don't decay, they don't rot, they don't get old, they're immortal. Now, the question was asked, so if we're going to be like Christ, well, we know that Jesus Christ was approximately 33 or something years old. Even He could have even been in his mid-30s, maybe even pushing 40 exactly. But if we're to stay basically with understanding that his ministry lasted approximately 30-some years, then we can understand that we could understand and, and, and believe that when he was in the prime of his life in our 30s, that we will be like that. So what does that mean? That would mean, imagine a 90-some-year-old person with a 
broken down, shriveled up body, when they are in their glorified bodies, they would be obviously in the prime of their life, restored at that age. Now you may say, I don't, I want proof of that. Well, it's obvious to even a person with a limited amount of knowledge or level of intelligence can comprehend if it says we shall be like him, we have to take him when he was resurrected. Now, we also know that Jesus Christ has always been Jesus Christ has always existed as God walking in a body, as a person. And they use the term, they love to say, his pre-incarnate Jesus appearing unto the Old Testament saints. Now, pre-incarnate, I understand, because we know that John, it's clear, that says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we understand from that perspective But the evil of this pre-incarnate thing is there's really no scripture that specifically delineates pre-incarnate. Now, the carne, in the context, carne literally comes from the Latin. Latin literally means meat, flesh. Well, we know that Jesus Christ was in a physical body. He wrestled with, we know, Jacob when Jacob's name was turned to Israel. We know that Jesus stood before and met Joshua as the captain of the guard. We know all of these things. We know and we see these things. So we have to believe that when Christ existed all this time, yes, he was a baby born wrapped in a manger. We knew that he grew up and developed. We also know that we are going to be with him and like him in his glorious body without getting too hung up on that. Now, I also have studies where I go into more detail about our reign with him, how we are in our position. And if you could read and study the Millennial Kingdom teaching, The Heart of the Matter, it will really help you. It talks about the resurrections, the fruits, the first fruit resurrection is Jesus Christ, and the first resurrection, we take part in that. Now, also the kingdom, the armies of heaven at the wedding supper of the Lamb, one in Israel. It's key that you understand, come meet my kinsman, Redeemer. Read that study. Uh, And also, you must understand the Godhead versus the Trinity. Brother Cameron Moshvik does a phenomenal job of that. Read that study. Now, there are other related studies I urge you to read of mine, and that is uh, He That Has Seen Me Has Seen the Father. Read the Bema Seat Judgment of Jesus Christ, the Great White Throne Judgment, uh, and the Great White Throne Judgment, how separate they are and the importance of that. Other related studies about woe be unto you if you think there's no pre-tribulation rapture. Understanding the end timeline. The Church of Philadelphia will be raptured, receive crowns, and reign with Christ, inheriting the kingdom study. Uh, Justification is our earnest inheritance and how sanctification works and how that is how we inherit. Not that we do inherit, but it's how we inherit. We need to understand that God records memorials that to be a good soldier for Jesus, we have to know our authority and responsibility in order to strive lawfully, and that we saints literally will rule with Jesus Christ. Also, I included here what about sin in our Christian lives because I get a lot of questions in this world that we live in now. We're still in this flesh. We can't get away from it. John Paul goes through it in depth in Romans chapter 7. But yet, we know that we have what in Romans chapter 8, which goes right in after Romans chapter 7. We are spiritual. We walk in the faith of Jesus Christ. We know that we're in these earthen vessels. We look and we yearn for the day when we're redeemed, when we're no longer in these broken down earthen vessels. We pray for that. We look for that. We love your appearing, dear Jesus. We hold on to 2 Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. 
Oh, Lord, even so, come, Lord Jesus, when we will be with you in our glorified bodies. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, amen. Maranatha.